In this video, which will be one of five, I'm gonna take you through my flashcards how-to guide to give you a little bit more detail on each of the five types of flashcards and some tips on how to construct them. In the last video, I covered a very specific type of flashcard, uh, which you can see here as being number two. In that video, we phrased it as a question because the concept was quite tricky and I didn't just wanna write down the word transport and globalization, so I framed it as a question, if you remember. In this video, I'm gonna take you through case study based flashcards, and then in the next keyword concept process focused, and then so on and so forth until we reach Q&A cards at the end. So let's get started. Okay, so all the flashcards are gonna have some mainstays, but then some of the boxes of information which you can see here in white are gonna be specific. Now, for this one, I'm going to not need to refer to the specification because uh, it's already on here and the information is pre-populated. But for others, in subsequent videos, I will take you through and give you some ideas as to, uh, if you wanted to, go ahead and try this out, um, which parts of your specifications, both at GCSE and A level, you might want to use. For this one, if you wanted to copy what I've done for Typhoon here, and if it's one of your case studies, that's obviously fine for you to do, but then you could use this skeleton structure for your earthquake or volcano case studies for GCSE. So let's start. On the top left box over here, you want to start by clearly signifying on the card what topic you're covering. Now for key stage four and key stage five, you could then attach also the spec point to it. So here, three, one, one, three, weather hazards. For key stage three students, obviously this is not as relevant, but you can still write down a topic name. Let's say you're covering settlements or weather and climate. We then have here this box telling you to have a very large, bold and underlined title. OK, so a very, very clear title uh, here. It's Tropical Storm Example, the effects of Typhoon here in 2013. Now, what you've got to be careful here is to use the words of the specific specification. So I've said Tropical Storm Example, not Typhoon Example, uh, not if I were doing a hurricane, uh, hurricane example, not cyclone example, because that is what the specification calls them, tropical storms. And then even right down to the fact that I've chosen the word effects as opposed to impacts. Now for the next two boxes, I'll just explain them using the actual context of this card. What I've done is I've split the effects of Typhoon here and into social, economic and environment, which are three very useful lenses through which we can view knowledge and geography. And I'm sure you've been using them all the way since the start of year seven. Now, they may not be relevant to every single case study that you do, but then that's when you need to decide what the category should be. So, for example, on side B, I've gone for immediate and for long term, because that's what I need to know are the two types of responses in relation to a tropical storm, but actually also for the tectonic hazard, which uh, has been picked for me, either an earthquake or a, or a volcano. I've then filled it, each box, with no more than four bits of information. So here I've gone with four, here I've gone with three, and on the other one, just two. Now, the reason for this is twofold. One, it's unfair to expect your brain to remember so much information for just one of the many case studies you're going to do. You could be doing up to 15 case studies and examples for GCSE geography, and perhaps many more for A-level. And the other one is, you don't really need to know much more than what is on here. You may decide that you don't want to include this third fact here for the social box and you could swap it in for another, that's fine. For environmental, you may just go with one or perhaps you would go with three and you're sacrificing one from the economic. The point is that in an exam answer and just generally speaking, if we're not so focused on exams, just to show off our understanding of a case study, you don't need to know that much. The point is, can you explain perhaps the potential impacts of something of why something was such a severe impact as opposed to you just knowing 4.55 billion was lost in damages as a result of Typhoon here. And then on the bottom left here, we have what is called dual coding. Now, dual coding is something that your teachers may have spoken to you about before. I can't really get into the details and the ins and outs of it here because it would take far too long. Just know that it has been proven that the use of images or small symbols or tiny sketches does help people remember certain bits of information. 
Now, it's not about being artistic and it's not about overdoing it. You'll notice I've only chosen to do two when potentially every single information, every single piece of information on this card could have a tiny diagram. But I've gone for ones that are going to help me remember. So, for example, everyone who's done this case study will know that 30,000 fishing boats being destroyed was a really, really uh, key impact, quite a quite a significant one. So I've drawn a tiny shipping, oh, sorry, a fishing boat so that that helps me remember. And over here, I've gone for some crops to signify farmland. The idea behind this is that in a high pressure situation, such as the real exam, a mock, or just an exam question in class, that your brain may not remember immediately this fact, but it will remember the image or the images that you've drawn. And then hopefully, because it is stored in your brain there somewhere and, and pressure is making it so that it's not that easy to retrieve, you will retrieve the other information. So that's explains side A. Side B just covers the rest of the case study. Now we're going to leave this video here because we've gone through an example, but in subsequent videos, I will take you through examples from the specification, but I feel like I've done that well enough here by linking it to the Typhoon example for GCSE geography. So hopefully that's been useful for you in studying case study based flashcards. That is one of five, which we're going to go through in this series.